Thank you, Rhea. How wonderful. So today we began a new series because we love series so much here, and I'm so glad that you do. Series entitled, The Season of Great Expectation. As we consider a thought for this morning, divine expectancy. We as unitics, and that's what we call ourselves, those <laughs> who affiliate with unity churches or um, have become members or whether you're just uh, regular attendees, we call ourselves unitics. And as unitics, we practice metaphysics. And I pray that that's a term that that softens your heart and that maybe entice you for those of you who may not be familiar. And metaphysics for us is the ability or that it's like it's the study of it's meta means to go beyond, to go above, to transcend the physical, to transcend the material world, the world of materiality. And we seek to understand things. We seek to understand sacred texts from a, a very spiritual perspective, from an esoteric perspective perspective so that we can get the inner meaning the inner there's always a story within the story you do know that right so whether we study the bible or whether we study the kabbalah or we study the bhagavad gita or the quran or we study the Tao or any other sacred text friends until we can find ourselves in that text and find the text in us, it's only dead writings. But when we can see it in us and see ourselves in it, then it takes on new life. This month, we have been, uh, as we have every other month, following the teachings of the co-founder of our movement, Charles Fillmore, through his writings, The Twelve Powers. And each month, we acknowledge, we celebrate, we become conscious of, aware of a particular power of mind that he identified. And he said, each and every one of us, we have these 12 powers. And the more we become aware of them and the more we work with them, the more spiritualized we become and the more Christ-like we become. And he says that the month of December is the month of divine life. It is our month to feel energized, to feel invigorated, to feel full of life and vitality. If you've ever wanted to feel alive, this is the month to wake up and be alive and to celebrate living. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, to Reverend Tony. And you know what? You don't have to wait on anybody else to tell you it's okay to do it. By right of still being in this body, you have permission to enjoy life and to enjoy living. The disciple that corresponds with the spiritual power is the disciple Judas. And we know that Judas has a bad rep. You know, Judas betrayed the master teacher. But I want you to know that there is a Judas within each and every one of us. And if we do not spiritualize this Judas, this Judas will always betray us. It will betray the pure essence of who and what we are as spiritual beings. And until we spiritualize Judas, Judas will sell you out every time for just a few pieces of silver or gold or maybe even a piece of bread. <laughs> the location in the body is the regenerative area and this is our life center and we work with the center. The color that corresponds with it is red so we encourage you to wear or carry something red, carry some shades of red to remind you that there is a power, there is an awesome power, there is a God power at work within you, within each one of us at all times, and we can pull on this power, we can call on this power, and it will respond to our call, our affirmation. It says, I am born anew to the knowledge of Christ in me, my hope of glory. I am born anew to the Christ in me, my hope of glory. Together, I am born anew. To the knowledge of Christ in me, my hope of glory. And this is a powerful affirmation for us to consider. So as we work with this divine expectancy, expectancy, expectancy is a powerful gift that we have. And it calls the universe to respond to the thing that we are expecting. And if we put it in context, I would like to define expectancy as the anticipation of possibilities. Anticipating possibilities. 
What is possible in your life today and for your life today? Expectancy calls us to get out of this realm that we so identify with, the realm of physicality, of materiality, and step into a new reality and see something that the eyes may have never seen before. And the master teacher says, if you can see it, if you can believe it, all things become possible to those that believe. And then even said, you don't need that much belief. It doesn't have to be such great belief. It says, believe the size of a grain of a mustard seed will move mountains in your life. Regardless to what those mountains might be. And mountains take on many names and many shapes and forms and sizes and conditions. They show up in various ways. But friends, expectancy, belief and anticipation can cause the mountains that's appearing or trying to appear on your path to be thy removed. It may not move, be to, uh, it may not crumble, but it will move out of your way. And you will find new strength. You will find new tenacity to move either up through, up or through the mountain. You know, you've traveled these uh, wonderful streets and freeways here in Oahu. You're going through all kinds of mountains. I'm like, how in the world? Do you ever think, how in the world can the mind of, could the mind of man think of that? But don't you know that that's the power that we have? And when you own your power, as Oprah says through her network, when you own it, and friends, you got to own it. You got to learn. We got to learn to stand in it unapologetically, undeniably stand in your power. It is the power of God that calls us out of timidity and being so you know, timid or so weak. And it calls us to be the great spiritual expressions of the divine here on earth because the world needs it. It says the earth is travailing as in labor pains, hoping that the sons of God, the spiritual ones, can wake up and stand in their power. And it says when we learn to stand in our power and begin to cry out as the voice of God here on this earth, the rocks will cease from crying. But until we do, the rocks will cry out. Expectancy. We're in the season of expectancy. Advent. The second Sunday of Advent. The time of anticipating, of waiting. We're expecting something. And there are signs that something wonderful, something extraordinary, something magical, something magnificent, something so majestic is waiting to come through for you. The trees will light up to tell you something's coming your way. Look all around. There are signs that something wonderful is trying to come through your life. And all we got to do is wake up and with a resounding shout, say yes to it. You don't have to see it with your physical eyes. Michael Beckwith says you got to see it with those spiritual eyes. With the spiritual eyes, we can see the invisible into visibility. With the spiritual ears, we can hear the inaudible into audibility with our spiritual senses. We work with the magic of God. And the universe responds, as Ernest Holmes would say, Expectancy, the anticipation of possibilities. It says nothing great can truly come into our lives until we expect it. Then one writer says that we have right now and we are experiencing in life right now exactly what we were expecting. If you look at your life and you know friends sometimes we got to be honest with ourselves right come on. We got to come out of denial. Not the Nile, but denial. <laughs> the first step to recovery is acknowledgement, right? 
We got to come out of denial and look at our lives and see what's there. And we understand, if we can truly understand these teachings, it says that we, we have and we are experiencing exactly what we've been expecting. Whether we were expecting it consciously or unconsciously, it shows up in our life by right of consciousness, but it doesn't show up to show you your weakness. It shows up to show us that we are working with the power. And anytime we work with it, that power will respond. I was having this conversation just recently with an individual. We were talking about something for next year, next October. 12 months away. And this individual says, well, Reverend Jack, do you think I might be able to get a scholarship to attend that? Or a stipend? I'm like, why are you planning to be broke already for next year? Why are you planning to be poor? Why not plan in your mind to have enough to do what you want to do and have plenty to spare and to share to help somebody else do it? You will get what you expect. Thank you. You get what you anticipate. And friends, whatever you get, we get it by right of consciousness. Good, bad, or indifferent. And the good that you have, you have gotten it by right of consciousness. And you don't have to apologize, explain, justify to anybody. You said, I'm here by right of consciousness. Some of you have been elevated. You've been promoted on positions to positions. You didn't have the degree, didn't have the credentials. You skipped over everybody else and you got in some positions that everybody else wanted to have. But you're there by right of consciousness. You did the work. You've been working on yourself. That's why no man, no woman should ever be unemployed. The master teacher says the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. If you get in the field of your mind and work, I promise you there's plenty of work there. And the pay is good. You can get overtime, double time, triple time. You get all kinds of bonuses. The benefits are great. But you got to do the work. A lot of people don't want to work. They want handouts. Like the lame man who was born lame from his mother's womb. Said he was there by the, by the pool and called the beautiful. And says every day he would make his way there and he would beg for alms. And one day Peter and John who represents faith and love walked by. And he looked at them and he says, hey, would you give me some money? Give me some bread, some silver, some gold. And Peter and John, who were spiritualized, the spiritualized faculties within, the, within ourselves, says, listen, look at me. Look at me. Silver and gold have I none. But all that I have I give unto thee. And it says, at that moment, the man stretched forth in consciousness and his body was made whole. They called forth a new level of anticipation and expectation and his environment responded. Ernest Holmes says, all of nature, everything that exists will begin to respond on your behalf. The moment you make up your mind to create and expect it. When we expect it to show up, we don't have to worry about how, when, or who will be involved. All we have to focus on is what it is that we desire and let the universe take care of the rest. Many of you might, have re might recall a story. See, there's so much power in expectation. You might have recalled this report that came out earlier this year in which a group of 14-year-of-age boys were out playing on the lake in St. Charles, Missouri. Playing on the ice, and it says that one particular child, eighth grader, I believe, fell through the ice, and he was there underwater for 15 minutes. 
The paramedics did all that they could to try to revive that child and got him to the hospital, to the emergency room. The doctors tried for 27 minutes to revive that child, but there was no response, not even a pulse. And they called his mother into that room. And when the mother stepped in the room, she began to pray. Prayer will fix it every time. It says, as she began to pray, she felt. See, that's why I say, you know, we got to move from here to here. We got to get out of the head. We don't need any more head knowledge. We need the heart knowledge. We need the feeling nature. It says she got her prayer from here. And she made the longest journey that any of us could ever make. She went from the head and she reached the heart. That's the center. That's Jerusalem. That's the habitation of peace. And it says in that moment when she went, took that longest journey, standing there looking at her child hooked up to all of these machines, she went in prayer from her head and got to her heart. And then in her heart, she felt that activity. She felt the power of God working in her. And she said to her son, wake up. Said the boy opened his eyes and he's been living ever since. The power of expectation will open, will raise the dead, will open blood, will heal the body, will uh, uh, bring the relationship into order, will heal family dynamics, will heal your finances. If you expect it, if you believe, all things become possible. We got to be willing to do the work. No free lunches, right? You got to work on the body, work on the mind, and you'll see how it'll work for you. Alethea, if you can play something, I'm not feeling to let it go just yet. Bear with me. Bear with me. Listen, I don't know who you are, but I feel that you're in this room right now, and I feel that... You might be even connected online. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're working with, whatever's been getting the best of you, whatever you've been facing, if you can only expect something different, expect it, expect it, expect it. Give God something to work with. Give God your expectation for something different, something bigger, something better, something brighter. That's the energy of the mind that the divine takes to use to bring forth the good. It activates the law of attraction, the principle of attraction. And you, don't, you won't know how it's going to happen. You won't be able to explain it. The soul will always look back and wonder how it happened. But some kind of strange, magnificent kind of way, the universe will begin to respond. And all of nature will start conspiring on your behalf to bring forth the good. Bring your hand to your heart. Come on. And I want you to feel the presence. Feel the presence. If you're streaming, put your hand on your heart. If you're watching by right of television, you put your hand on your heart right now. You feel the presence. Feel the presence. Feel the presence of that great spirit moving inside of you. It says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can hope, think, or imagine according to his power. His power that is at work within us right here and right now. That same power that healed your body once can heal it again. That same power that healed your finances once can heal it again. That same power that healed your relationship once. Catherine Kuhlman said, if God did it once, God can do it again. It is the power of expectation. I can see the invisible. I can hear the inaudible. I can do the impossible. The sky is the limit to what I can have. All things are possible to me because I believe. I believe. I believe. And my belief makes it so. God bless you.